Well hello Internet and welcome to part 3 of my web services tutorial. Today I'm going to cover a very simple example of how SOAP as well as REST works. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so here is our students class. And if you haven't watched the previous tutorials, you should definitely watch those, otherwise this might be really confusing. And there is a link to them underneath of this video in the description. So I have my students class, and I'm going to be using it once again inside of this guy. So I'm gonna come down here, and I'm gonna create myself a brand new method. And I'm gonna call this public function get student names and I'm going to keep these examples very very simple so we're not going to get into very complicated things but by the end of this I think you'll understand both soap and rest then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a string here and it's going to be called student names and I'm going to put Dale Cooper inside of here and all the other students that we have seen in the previous tutorials and then what I'm going to do here to keep this very simple is whenever this method is going to be called I am just going to return student names and we're going to be using that in the other files we're going to make and those are going to be the soap service as well as the soap client and then we're going to have an API which is going to be used by our rest client so it's going to be soap service.php and soap client.php api.php and rest client.php and of course all of those can be found in the description. So I'm going to start off with the SOAP service. Now SOAP stands for Simple Object Access Protocol, except some people say that it no longer stands for that, and some people just say that it should be just referred to as SOAP. Either way, what it is, is it's based on XML, and it's a way for us to access web services. Now a WSDL, or Web Service Description Language, is an XML format commonly used with SOAP. And what it's used for is describing the functionality of network services. As well, a WSDL file is going to describe how the service is called, what parameters it expects, and the data structures it returns. What I'm going to do here to keep everything very simple is use a non-WSDL SOAP server. And these are very, very common because very often what people do is they have the WSDL file actually constructed using software. So it's very complicated. If I was going to cover WSDL, I would cover it in its own tutorial. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my students.php file, which I had shown you just a second ago. So require once and students.php. I mean, the goal here is to teach about 90% of what you need to know to be able to use this stuff, and then you can move on and learn all the other things on your own. But like I said, the WSDL files are normally generated with software, so kind of complicated stuff. So what we're going to do here first off is because the WSDL file isn't going to be used, we must provide a URI for our service, and we're going to store this in an array, and this is a key value pair, and in this situation, I'm just going to make this local host. And there that is. Now what I need to do is create a SOAP server object. And I'm just going to call this server. And you'll either pass it a WSDL file or null and an array that contains the URI that we have here. So I'm going to go SOAP server to generate this guy. And all this is built into PHP, which is awesome. And if you're not using a WSDL file, you just type in null. And then we're going to type in options. And if you guys want me to get more into the specifics of all these different things, leave a comment below and I shall do so. But I like to keep things simple. So then we're going to go with our server and define the class that's going to hold all the functions that we want to be made available. So set class and that's going to be students. Close that off. Then we're going to go and call handle. And handle is going to be used to process SOAP requests as well as respond to them. And that is literally all that we need to do. So we're going to save that. See, very, very simple. Now we're going to go to our SOAP client and we're going to call it. Now the very first thing we must do is to find the location of the service in the client because we do not have a WSDL file. So we're going to go option is equal to array and we're going to call location. And then after that, we can go HTTP localhost. WS, which is the directory that I have all of these different files inside of, and then soap service.php, and then our URI. We're just giving it the location of the soap service, which is the file that we just created. And then we're going to go HTTP and also localhost. Now, inside of a try block, because we could get errors here, 
we're going to provide a client to read from the service. So client is equal to new SOAP client. And like I said before, this also is going to receive either a WSDL file or it's going to contain null and our options that we just defined. And then if we want to get the students from our class, make a call to that procedure. We're going to go client and then we can call get student names. Pretty simple. And then after that, we could echo out those students. And then what we want to catch here, any exception, the very specific exception we're going to catch here is a SOAP fault. And give this the name EX. And in this situation, which we have that, let's just dump out the error on the screen, which you normally wouldn't do, but in this situation, it works fine. And there you can see if you open that up in the browser, there are all our student names. So pretty simple, and SOAP in general is pretty simple. That's basically all that you're going to have to do, or the basics anyway. Now let's take a look at creating a REST API and calling it. Now REST, which stands for Representational State Transfer, allows anything to work with your data that can send an HTTP request, which is basically anything. Now there are four main types of methods you can use. I'm only going to cover GET which is used to retrieve data from a resource. There's also POST, which is used to create a new resource, which is considered somewhat unsafe. Then we have PUT, which is used to update a resource, which is also kind of considered to be unsafe. And then there is DELETE, which is used to delete a resource, which I'm sure you can understand why that would be a little bit unsafe. There are safer ways to do it, and I will get into them if you guys would request that. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a function and it's going to be called get student info. This is going to be a little bit more elaborate than the last one. And this is the API.php file. Now inside of this, I'm going to create student info, which is going to be an array. And then what we're going to do is allow them to pull in different types of information. Now you would normally do this inside of a database, but to keep this simple, I'm just going to put everything inside of a switch statement. So case, they pass in one. We are going to set the student info for our array to be first name, lowercase, first name to match our database that I've been using here in all these examples. And I'll put Dale inside of there. And then I'll put last name. And in this situation, I'm going to Cooper. Address is going to be set to 123 Main Street. And then I'll say Yakima, Washington. Very simple. And then we'll break. Then I went ahead and did that for all of the other different types of students that we have here, and I have a total of five different students in our switch statement. Then based off of the choice of ID that they picked, we are going to re return that information. So like I said, just keeping this simple, you would normally use a database for this, but I think you get the idea. You definitely, if you've seen the other tutorials that I've done on PHP and MySQL, you can definitely hook into a database. Another thing that I'm gonna wanna do here is get student list. This is something else that they're going to be able to call from our REST service. And what this is going to allow them to do is I'm actually going to show a list of the students and it's going to use the service to pull and display that list on the screen. So put an array in an array. And then I'm going to assign the ID, which you just saw here, right here inside of this list. And let's say that I want to have the name and then the name is going to also be displayed on our screen. So they're going to be able to click on any of these different links on the screen and it's going to show them, you know, on the screen. And there I went ahead and put all of them in there all at one time. And then we can go student list. And then what we're going to do is execute the proper method above based off of the requests that they make. So we're going to go is set and we're going to use get in this situation and check for an action to be set. And I'm going to finish this off and then show you exactly how these lists are going to be created but the rest part's all going to be right here inside of this guy. Put another switch statement, and we can say case right here. It's gonna handle which method above is going to be executed. So based off of the URL, it's either going to execute get student list, or it's going to execute get student info, and then provide an ID and provide the right information in that situation. So this guy just provides a list. Whenever one of those list items is clicked on, that ID that was clicked on is going to be sent up here to this guy, and it's going to print out the proper information for the students. So get student list is going to be one of the options that they're going to have to use our service. And then we'll set our value to whatever it would be to cover or to execute this method right here. And then break. And the other option for them is going to be get student right here. And in that situation, we're going
going to store what is returned whenever get student info is called. And then along the way, we're also going to pass inside of it the ID, specific ID for the specific student information we want. And there that is. And then after we do all of this, way down here at the bottom, if we want to return JSON data, for example, we can say exit and then encode this information as JSON. Stick with me here, it'll make sense in a second. So that's the API. This is the client. What we want to do here is check if one of the student names was clicked on whenever we got here. And if it was, we want to get the specific student data using our API. So we're going to get student info equal to, and we can say file get contents. And then in this situation, HTTP, call localhost, WS, and then call the API, which is the file we just created. And then to action, see we're doing everything through just a basic URL. We're going to pass in get student and ID is equal to, and then after that, we can tap on the ID that was specific to what they clicked on. Go down to the end, put a semicolon. So see right here, get student right there. If we jump over into the API, get student, that's this guy right here. And then we specifically want to get the ID that they clicked on. And that's how we're going to be able to pull that information just by using basic URL. Very useful. Now let's say that we want to decode from JSON into an array. That's very easy to do. Code that. Pass in student info and true. And then let's also say that we want to print out our student information. In this situation, I'm going to close off the PHP and print out first name. And then we're going to call PHP again. And then we can go echo student info. And we'll be able to get our first name for that array because that's set. Say we want to close that off and throw a break statement inside of here. Turn that into a dollar sign. And then we're going to do this for all of the other ones here. So we also have last name as well as the address. So we'll do a last name and change this to last name. And then address as well and address. Reopen so that we can create some more PHP code. And then we're going to say else we're going to print out a list of the students onto the screen in that situation. Because that list is what they're going to click on to be able to get the student information. So to do that, I'm going to come in here and create student list. And that is also all going to be generated based off of calling the API to get that list. So to get it, we're going to say file get contents. And then we'll pass in URL again. So it's going to be localhost again, WS, API.php, and action is equal to, and the specific method that we want to call here, or specific function, whatever we want to call, is get student list. And that's going to provide that and then store it. So we'll be able to use that list. Okay, get student list. See, get student list is right here. Whenever this is called, this method's going to execute. And in this situation, we're going to decode the JSON data. JSON, decode, pass in the student list, and true. Once again, close off the PHP, reopen, and I'm going to go for each student list as student. And then for each one of these, I can then create a link for each of the students in our list. Echo, localhost, WS rest client dot php and then the action in this situation is going to be get underscore student and then we're also going to pass in the id so that we'll be able to know what student was clicked on and then to get that student id we just call the student array id stored inside of there inside of quotes of course close off the php code jump down here again and then we're going to go alt is equal to open php up again and echo and then specifically we're going to put student underscore follow that up with student underscore and whatever the id is for it close the php so that we'll be able to put in the closing tag open it back up again and echo and student and then we'll also pass in the name close the php code so that we can put in the closing tag for our link and then we'll also throw a break statement in there. And then in this situation, for this for each to match up with it, we're going to have to go PHP and end for each. And keep everything all together, PHP, and then cycle around through here and close that off as well. Little bug bounce back over here into rest client.php. Put that close and cur curly brace inside of there. Okay, and whenever we open it up in the browser, you can see right here the list of student names. And if you click on them, you're going to see additional information on all the students, right like that. And you can also look up here and you can see get student ID 1 is passed over. And let's go back here and make sure that this all looks clean. So just view page source. 
and everything looks okay and uh, I don't know why I thought that I needed this alt in here this is sort of things that happen when I work out of my head so let's bounce over here and delete that so where is that da -da 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 -da. You can see right here there's the alt part and I want to keep the ID part so basically I just have to cut this part out of here and to think about it I don't need this ID either so let's go and get rid of that and bounce that over and file save and that should work this closes off the tag that's what's what that's there for and then reload and view page source and yes indeed this looks a lot cleaner so there we go there is all of the different student names and you can see that whenever we click on them that we are able to really seamlessly pull in all of that additional information on said students so there's a whole lot to do. Once again, if you guys want me to cover more on rest or more on any of these topics, please leave a question or comment below. Otherwise, till next time.